Hi, I'm Brian from TheEpicenter.com. We started carrying a new product called Stove in a Can, and we had a couple of customers ask if this could produce enough heat energy to be able to run the pan charger. Um, now, we've done some videos on the pan charger before. This is a DC generator that outputs power to a USB port so that you can charge USB devices like cell phones. And it needs a heat source. So we're going to see if this puts out enough heat to be able to run this. And uh, we're going to hook up my dead iPhone. This is an iPhone 4S. And the battery is so low, you see it just barely does anything. Uh, it won't actually turn on. So we're going to take this outside and uh, fire it up and see if it puts out enough heat. I wanted to show you a couple of things before we go outside. Um, the stove in a can has holes all the way around on this piece. Now this piece is normally on the inside here, but uh, when you're ready to use it, you go ahead and put it in. The hand charger has a handle here that we want to protect from heat. And normally we would put a heat shield in here if you're using this on uh, you know, a campfire or something. So what I did was I took a piece of metal. This uh, happens to be copper, but any kind of scrap metal. Um, you could even cut a piece off a beer can. And I made this so it fits right here on the inside. And what it does is it blocks off a couple of these holes. Okay. And then um, what we're going to use is we're going to use this plate, uh, which is actually designed for our firebox stove, and it fits very nicely. And then the pan charger will actually sit in that. And you see that these holes here are being covered so that we're not going to need any kind of a heat shield. Uh, flame will be coming out from all the rest of the holes except for those two. Okay, it's been about uh, five minutes, and the stove in a can is up and running. And the pan charger is outputting, and it's actually at full power output. So this first LED lets you know when 5 volts is available. And this lets you know when you have maximum power. So we are going to go ahead and hook up an iPhone. Start this stopwatch right now. All right, and there we go. So we'll check up in... Oh, maybe another uh, 15 minutes or so, and we'll see what's going on. And when we did this with propane, with a uh, propane camp stove, it took about 17 minutes to get the iPhone uh, to a point that it actually powered up, and you can make a phone call with it. So we'll uh, check in and let you know how it's doing. We're having a few uh, wind direction changes, so rather than burn up my new iPhone, I decided to go ahead and move it down out of the way so it's still connected up but uh, at least I don't have to worry about it burning to a crisp okay alright so it's been 12 minutes and we're gonna go and see how the phone is doing and Let's see if we can turn it on yet. Hey, wait a minute. Look at that. It's up. It's up and running. So uh, that's a little bit surprising. It's a little bit surprising uh, that it's up and running quite so fast compared to when we did it with propane. But I think with propane, we started the timer exactly the second we turned on the propane and it does take a little bit of time for the pan charger to get up and running about five minutes um, and I did hook this up after the pan charger was at full power so that could account for the difference but uh, impressive so it looks like the stove in a can has enough BTU power to be able to uh, run the pan charger so that's pretty cool so there you have it the stove in a can and the pan charger in operation and uh, I'm gonna run this for a little while and uh, see if I can charge my phone up a little bit because I have to make a few phone calls I decided while I'm waiting for my phone to fully charge up I'd go ahead and make some soup since I've got hot water and uh, we'll just go ahead get the phone ready and have lunch.
for theepicenter.com. I'm Epicenter Brian, signing out.